We'll try to get done early tonight. I would like to call the April 20, uh, 2022, regular April uh, meeting of the Fenton Community High School District 100 board, board to order. Uh, may I have a roll call, please, Mary? Here. 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 Lewis? Here. Redzinski? Here. Rago? Here. Ting Paul Pong? Here. And uh, we have a quorum. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, James, please read our uh, Bison Way statements. Fenton mission statement, to cultivate successful, passionate, empowered learners through rigor, relevance, and relationships. Fenton belief statements, successful, passionate, empowered learners thrive when we provide a safe, caring, and welcoming environment. Diversity, equity, and inclusion unify our community. School and home collaborate as one. We champion innovative teaching and engaged learning with state-of-the-art facilities. We infuse social emotional learning into academics and culture. We prepare students to fulfill their civic responsibility. We immerse students in authentic life experiences. The Bison Way, students and adults at Fenton High School create a safe, caring, empathetic environment where we believe in each other, respect diversity, communicate openly, grow together and hold each other to high expectations to become the leaders and innovators of the future. Thank you, James. And Mary, do we have any requests for public comments? Yes, we do. We have one. Uh, Anthony Grazzini regarding the referendum. Okay, thank you. And uh, just uh, to set the boundaries, uh, limited to three minutes per speaker with a limit of 30 minutes per topic. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. You guys hear me? Yes. 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 Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody um, on the school board and everybody in the audience for investing in our community. Um, I think the referendum is a fantastic idea. Um, $129 million is not a lot of money in today's world. And my public comment is really only to ask you to be stewards of this money as you move forward with um, improving our community and improving the educational outcomes for our kids. Neighboring school district Elmhurst is near $22 million in cost overruns and their referendum, uh, their contingencies and construction have been blown. Um, you know, nobody's minding the shop. Mm -hmm. In my own school district where I'm a school administrator, we have an owner's rep. The owner's rep really makes sure that the things that we're doing are done well for um, our school district and for our community and that the uh, constituents get the best value and, and the people, the kids get the greatest benefit from the uh, construction and then the infusion of energy and optimism that comes along with the, the true gentrification of the school. So I want to applaud you and I just hope that you, you continue to be stewards of the the taxpayers' dollars because uh, safe and well-maintained schools, right, are the hallmark of success. You have to Maslow before you bloom. And as you walk around the building here, um, as I've coached youth wrestling uh, in the building for a few years now, I see the impact of the changes that have been made. So I just hope that you continue to do that. And I want to thank everybody for the hard work. And um, I'm very, very, very excited that on June 28th, the referendum will, will pass, and kids in Bensonville will have the same opportunities as kids in some of the surrounding areas. So thank you. Before, before you take off, excuse me, excuse me, before you take off, could, could you state your name again, just for the record, and also the village you represent? I can't hear it. Uh, could you your state your name? Your, your... The town you live in. Um, uh, Anthony Grazzini. So, uh, well, I'm a resident of Cicero, Illinois, and I'm also a homeowner in Bensonville, Illinois. So thank you. Two places, kids that live in Elmhurst with their mom. And I, I have a question too. What did you call it? An owner, the, the owner, the, the person who is coordinating? The, you, My full name? No, no, no. You said when, that have an owner, owner rep. State owner owner. Rep. So yeah, yeah, my school district has an owner's rep. Owner's, owner's rep, rep. okay. The, the owner's rep really does, works through our bidding process 
alongside the superintendent and helps make sure that the construction manager does what the construction manager is supposed to do. Um, we all know that when you put things out to bid and you go to the lowest responsible bidders, there's times where you know there are change orders and things that happen, right. and those change orders drive prices up. Um, in, in Cicero District 99, it's been something that's been beneficial to us, um, and I think it will be beneficial here. Don't have a horse in, in the race as far as the construction and everything else that goes on, but I, I, I do think that given the times that we're in and the cost overruns that go into construction, Looking at different avenues to save money, are, it, it's a smart approach. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Anthony, Thank for you. coming in. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Uh, next, we go to. Yeah. Uh, next, we go to celebrate our excellence here. At recognitions with Sam, please. Good evening, and tonight we are going to honor contest dram, dra drama, drama, <laughs> drama, and uh, group interpretation. So thank you all for coming out here tonight with this wonderful crew. Uh, well, first, like I said, we're we'll starting with contest drama directed by Dr. Mike Mitchell, assisted by Amanda Baker and Jeremiah Barr. This year's show, A Piece of My Heart, was a compilation of two stories about heroism of nurses in the Vietnam War. A very moving performance. The cast and crew of Peace in My Heart were undisputed sectional champions. It was really no contest. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, I thought you'd like that, Alva, Evelyn, but that's okay. Um, on, their way to the, on their way to the state finals. While at state, Delilah Johnson, Evelyn Perez, and Carissa Lara earned all state cast honors. Dr. Mitchell is here to share more. Well, first off, um, I would like to thank the Board of Education for inviting us here tonight to recognize the achievements of these students. Uh, each one of them is gonna come up and tell you a little something about like their favorite memory or whatnot from the whole experience. Um, quite honestly, I can be known for being very long-winded, so I promise to be very brief uh, so that you can hear from the cast and crew. Uh, but before I hand it over to them, I would be um, remiss if I did not acknowledge the, the pleasure it is to work with uh, Ms. Amanda Baker and Jeremiah Barr. They are just like the best production team people to, to work with. Um, I would also like to thank uh, Mr. Aguilar. Uh, he is here. I was hoping he would be here uh, for helping us out as a chaperone. Um, I'm not really sure if he fully knew what he was signing on for, but um, <laughs> rest assured, we will ask him to join us again if the opportunity arises. <laughs> um, without any further ado, I would like for the cast and crew to come up and just say a couple of things. But before they do that, I do have to just make one quick comment. Somehow at the award ceremony, they skipped over Delilah Johnson's name. So Evelyn and Carissa got a chance to get up there and get a round of applause with all of their peers from across the state. Um, I would like to do one more round of applause for her so that she gets her just deserves. So. Without any further ado, uh, cast members and crew, if you would just kind of line up and introduce yourself and just, you know, favorite memory, that kind of thing. Hi, my name is Evelyn Perez, and I was part of the contest drama. Um, I think one of my favorite memories was, um, I think, the Friday of competition. We got stuck in an elevator. <laughs> <laughs> and we were stuck in there for like 15 minutes, and we didn't expect it because it said that there was like a 15 max capacity, and we only had 12 people in the elevator. <laughs> but yeah, we got stuck for like 15 minutes, and so I think that was a pretty good memory. Um, but I would like to thank my family and my friends and the cast, crew, and directors of Contest Drama for making this experience so worthwhile. Um, with this being one of my last ever plays at Fenton High School, it was like truly an amazing experience. And so like, I'd like to thank anyone who was involved with that. Mm -hmm. Hi, um, my name is Nathaniel Herrera and I was very uh, lucky and fortunate to be a part of 
uh, this year's contest drama, A Piece of My Heart. Um, I would first like to start off by thanking uh, Dr. Mitchell and Mr. Barr and Ms. Baker for um, making uh, this year's production as great as it was. Um, I think the best part of it all was just being able to uh, tell a beautiful story with um, all these wonderful people behind me. So <laughs> thank you. Hi, I'm Erica Ayala, and I was a student director for this year's production. Um, I think my favorite part was just being able to be with my friends uh, for one last hurrah almost. As a senior, it's a really hard goodbye. It was my privilege to be a director for these amazing people. Hi, my name is Lita Aguilar, and uh, this year I had the honor of working with Dr. Mitchell and Ms. Baker and all of the amazing cast and crew members for a contest drama. Um, favorite memory that I have, well, Erica already said it, we got stuck in an elevator. How crazy is that? Um, and um, there's, there's a fun little thing that you might not know about it because they didn't tell you, but it might have been my fault. <laughs> um, there was a button and I may have leaned on it, but I, you know, there were 13 people in an elevator so, you know, 50-50 chance. That's what I like to say. Um, <laughs> but not only that experience that I've had with them, being stuck in an elevator can tell you a lot about people, um, <laughs> but every other experience I've had with them over the past time that we've had together this year, it's been amazing, and I will keep that with me for the rest of my life. It has been the best experience this year. Uh, Hi, my name is Carissa. Um, this is my first year doing contest drama, and it felt so awesome to be in person again and like have getting to watch all of the amazing performances. And I feel so fortunate that I was able to do it with a team of like awesome musicians and performers, and it felt great to do that again. So yeah, thank you. Um, my name is Natalia Alvarado, and I think my favorite experience, as the others have said, is the elevator. It was a real <laughs> bonding experience, but overall, I think the overall experience was being able to spend time with people that wanted to create this show and be able to perform it to people. Thank you. Hello, my name is Alex, and I was part of Contest Drama. My favorite moment, for sure, was still the elevator. <laughs> it was still one of my favorite moments. But for sure, one of my other favorite moments was just being a part around Contest Drama in general, cast and crew and the directors. They were just very much welcoming with open arms, to be honest. They were really amazing. Thank you. My name's Ariana. Um, getting away from the elevator, um, my favorite moment was just being able to see so many other schools have the same passion for theater as us and being able to see their awesome performances. And I want to thank you guys and, of course, the cast and the crew for giving us the opportunity to do that. Thank you. Hi, my name is Delilah, um, and my favorite part about Contest Drama was, well, obviously you can see we have a pretty small cast. Um, well, not small enough to successfully fit in an elevator, I guess. Um, but I was really able to make like a strong bond with each of the members of this cast, which was so cool. Um, and they're like a family. So. Hi, my name's Adam. And uh, um, I think my favorite uh, experience for doing this, this is my first year doing this, and uh, my, I, I have a regret of not doing this before. Um, but uh, I'm very glad I got to do this specific play because um, I think like Lita said, uh, it'll stick with me forever. Um, and I'm very glad I got to do it with the people I was able to do it with. Um, but I think my favorite experience is the moment right before every performance that we had where everybody locks together and everybody has the same mindset and everyone has to go to the bathroom right before we have to play. <laughs> um, but it's just that moment where we all think, we got this no matter what happens. This has been such a great experience. So uh, luckily, 
we, I got to have that moment like three times, three, four times? Yeah. A few times. So um, it's cool. Uh, I'm very pre appreciative that that's, the, uh, that's my last time ever getting to do um, uh, stage play here in Fenton. Um, but I'm very glad I got to do it with the people I was able to do it with. And uh, yeah, it's an experience that I'll keep with me forever. Thank you. Okay, we could take a quick picture over here, and then we'll continue on. I, I think we can. I can be best. Probably, probably, yeah. probably best over here. Maybe have them stay there because it's crowded. We'll, we'll come by them. Okay. We'll come over there because oh. we're a little tight for space oh, over there. <laughs> Mr. Barrow, would you like my chair? <laughs> Okay, next up we have group interpretation. They also performed extremely well at sectionals, taking second place in the group interp category, very difficult sectional, well known throughout the state, and also advanced to the state finals. Nicole Hendricks and Melissa Feinberg directed a rendition of the 1990 hit movie, Edward Scissorhands. My favorite part was when Edward poked a hole in the water bed, in the water, and then he kind of went all over the place. That was, that was my favorite part, at least, so it was great. Um, so while at State, Angel Santiago, Sochi Quinones, and Yarley Galeno earned all state cast honors. <laughs> now I'll turn it over to Ms. Hendricks to share a little bit more. Hello. Hello. It feels like I was just here about a month ago. Yeah. Lovely. I'm so happy to be back and to be celebrating our group and Turp cast this year with Edward Scissorhands. This was the show that got shut down the year that we, you know, were some, the world was shut down. And so we were so happy to remount the show, even with new kids and new parts and some kids returning and taking on uh, <laughs> new parts as well and having a little modern twist on a dark romantic tale. Together, the kids created a 30-minute story that was absolutely lovely and endearing and had a humorous moments. And thank you so much for allowing us to have a fan bus as well. It was nice to have some support there. And uh, nice to see you in the audience, too, yeah. Mr. Uh, Dr. Benson. And um, I couldn't have done any of this at all without uh, the lovely Miss Feinberg. See you over here. <laughs> And the wonderful uh, tech director, Mr. Barr, also putting our set together. We have a new like universal set that we'll be using. So thank you so much, Mr. Barr, for all of that. <laughs> and yes, John Aguilar made himself available. And boy, yeah, he did not know what he was getting into, as Mr. <laughs> Mitchell had mentioned. And it was absolutely lovely to have 
a parent there on board also considering like how does the schedule work? How do we get from this place to this place and keep this moving along? And celebrating and having live theater in person again. Um, we have a few representatives who volunteered to speak on behalf of the group. So I have three speakers tonight um, and we will um, leave out the elevator situation. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'd like to invite up, who wants to go first? All right, Sochi Quinones was shaking her head no, but she means yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm pretty sure this is my fourth time here, so I think you guys know who I am. Um, um, just to start off, I'd like to thank all of you up here again. Thank you so much for guiding our school as much as you can and for obviously interacting with us and having us up here every single time we've accomplished something. Um, I'd also like to thank um, the wonderful co-directors that we had. Um, I can't speak too much about them or else I start crying because of how much I love them. Um, but no, I don't think I'd swap this cast for anyone else in the world. I wouldn't have chosen any better people to spend about 100 hours with in March alone. Um, don't even want to think about speech. But <laughs> um, as often as we would get on each other's nerves, I think every single person on this cast is incredibly inspirational. And I am incredibly grateful for having them in my life. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Angel Santiago. I'm a junior. I, uh, I played the role of Edward during the performance. So, so um, I wanted to start off by saying like thank you to uh, the whole cast and directors. I'm going to keep it short because as some of them made fun of me already. The water might, the waterworks might come in a bit, so I'm gonna keep it short. Um, it really was an honor to work with everyone, uh, the seniors who I've known all my years of high school, um, the new seniors that I've met, the juniors, the freshmen, the sophomores, everyone. Um, my favorite memories were always performing. I got to make some stupid faces and flail my arms out and spike up my hair and get a really funny reaction and. At State, what really what always stood out to me was the crowd reactions. And I remember specifically is towards the end of the show, I was supposed to lean in for a kiss before we kiss. Of course, we don't kiss. But it got really uncomfortably close because someone wouldn't walk in a bit soon. <laughs> <laughs> but you could hear, when, once he comes up the stairs, you could hear, <laughs> you could hear all the, all the crowd go, <gasps> And then, oh, once they realized it wasn't going to happen. But yeah, um, it really was an honor to work with everyone. And I wouldn't exchange this cast for anyone else. I'm glad we got to do this after. Oh, I was in the original show, so I'm glad we got to do this and redo it and go to state with it. Thank you. Hello. I'm Morgan, I'm a senior, and this is my first time up here, so as nervous as I am, <laughs> I want to start off by saying GI and CD aren't teams, they're families, um, and you learn that throughout the way. And um, I wanted to come up here to say how proud I am of each and every person behind me, even our directors, by putting up with us. <laughs> um, and each and every person was able to put on such a different persona, given the circumstances and the time crunch with the early Saturday mornings and the late evening nights. I think that we did amazing. Um, I wouldn't also trade this cast for anybody else, and I am honored to be a part of this team because this is my first time doing GI, and I encourage and anything to push other people to join, even if it is super last minute. Um, uh, that's all. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's come on up for a picture this time.
<laughs> we get there. We oh, Russell did not get close in here, so we'll get her. We got one more. There is one more. Oh, Russell, oh, she, 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 she couldn't make it. Oh, okay. oh, Russell. Okay. Oh, okay. Is it bad? See, I read my book. Uh, very good. Uh, let's go right into informational items with uh, James, please. Fantastic. The first one is Bensonville Park District presentation. Uh, it was an honor to have the entire park district here, their board, of it, uh, their board, their staff, their director, Joe Velez. It was fantastic. They were here during the finance facility meeting, so I'll summarize it as, as best I can. Um, to make a long story short, they want to partner up with, with Fenton in regards to two um, fields, soccer fields in the near future. Um, but Joe started off by saying this, and which touched me um, really in a special place. Your kids are our kids. They're all our kids. Fantastic. And that's how we like to see their park district kids as well, whether it's District 2 and District 7. They're all our kids living in our communities. They support our facilities, which is basically the referendum. Um, uh, they want us to stay away from, um, or we would like to as well, to duplicate services, whether it's, you know, uh, the facilities, more fields, make sure that they're utilized uh, uh, in an efficient way. They launched their Bensonville Park District 2.0, which is to create more green space and more activities for the residents of Bensonville as part as well as Wooddale, uh, because part of their park system is also in Wooddale. Specifically for Fenton, uh, once again, two soccer fields uh, at Fenton, with one of them being having a dome. They also would like to, as part of their 2.0 uh, initiative, an, another indoor pool uh, within the community. Um, and they want to do this, to build all this without any community costs. Zero dollars for taxpayers, as he it was quoted. In regards to the soccer fields, an IGA and a government uh, uh, agreement would have to be formed between the Park District and Fenton. Um, I will work on that in regards to where we need to get to, uh, what we need to do to get there and obviously present to the board when we move any kind of movement. Uh, it seemed to me it was, um, there's a certain of urgency. It's not, well, let's wait a year. It didn't seem like, let's wait three months. It's like, we're gonna do this next week uh, as fast as I will. You guys know I like to move a little fast as well. So uh, I'll get you definitely more information um, uh, for, for next board meeting. Timetable, once again, is uh, I heard next month at least to start to talk with the IGA. Joe has uh, experience creating IGA where he worked um, as a uh, Chicago Park District Director as well. Uh, but what he wants us to really focus on is having a resolution. His last piece was having a resolution, probably I'm suggesting next board meeting, which is May, to have a resolution to start working on the IGA. So two parts, let's do the resolution first, then let's get that IGA document. Um, next up is informational referendum events. That's a great picture of Rick. Okay, I think he took it himself there. Uh, no, it's, uh, let me get back to my notes here. Um, as you can see here, um, we have plenty of activities. We are very busy um, with, um, Getting, uh, informing our community um, in regards to our referendum. 
Um, let me just spend a few minutes highlighting some of the referendum educational events leading up to June 28th. This is truly a team effort and a lot of folks are putting in a lot of momentum and energy uh, to these events and most of them are here, uh, including our architects there in the audience. As you will see, we try to couple events with referendum educational information, basically to talk in an informational way about the referendum. As our referendum survey reports, it is important that Fenton engages and inform community members. We know if they're informed, um, um, they're more likely to support the referendum. This is the most uh, current version of the information referendum events. And now there's three slides here. I'll go through it quickly. It is incomplete. We are trying to schedule more informational events. Groups like District 2 and District 7 boards were working on um, presenting at their, at, their, at their board meeting as well as religious organization. So let me just take a look at this one real quick. So mailing number, um, could you go to the first slide, Jim? So mailing, uh, uh, referendum mailing number one went out this week. Uh, we have our board meeting this evening. City of Wooddale referendum presentation is tomorrow at 7.30. We'll have two students there, one from Bensonville and one from um, Wooddale to help Bruce and myself present our, uh, our referendum informational uh, presentation. Uh, during the spring musical, April 21st to the 23rd, Jose, Michelle, Sam, and Mary uh, will have a informational booth, a referendum booth table um, uh, during the, the spring musical before and after as people walk by. And it's really cool. The way had, if you, if you could see what, uh, Jim, if you could go back so our, our board members know exactly how it's going to look like. It looks like that. So we have flyers, brochures, and the posters uh, that we had made. So exactly the presenters who are there, like Michelle or Jose or Sam, can quickly say, hey, look, here's our brochure. This is what we're uh, planning to do uh, in regards to the, uh, our facility improvement. Uh, uh, League of Women Voters will be here on, on Friday. Kate and Sam are leading that chart as well with Mary. League of Women Voters, as we know, uh, helps with uh, voter registration um, and inform our kids to fulfill their civic duties. Um, they will also talk about early voting and ab absenteeism uh, voting as well. They will also will be here on May 7th for our Cinco de Mayo Kermes. Coffee with the superintendent is this Saturday, 9.30. Uh, I will lead that charge along with Mary and Rick. And later on that afternoon, on the 23rd, we have about 75 senior citizens to see uh, the, pl the, the play um, at, um, at 1 o'clock, Rick? 12 o'clock. So um, as you can see, this week is full with activity. It's a blitz of, hey, look informational about the referendum. Week number six, uh, 25th, the next week, incoming freshman activity, athletic sphere, always have that same booth there. Once again, engage, inform, information. Touring coffee with the principal is Sam's turn to give up one of his Saturdays. Uh, there, Sam, you ready for that one? So that's on the... Uh, there you go, we'll make sure you get double espresso 9.30. Um, we try to switch it up uh, in regards to time as well. Next slide. Mailing number two goes out May 2nd. So when we say mailing, there is a brochure, there's information about the referendum to all the homes in Bensonville and Wooddale, as well as businesses. So everyone is uh, informed in regards to what we're doing here at Fenton. The goal is very simple. Inform, inform, oversaturate. So we do every can, everything we can to engage our, our, our parents, our residents within the, both communities. Uh, during a choir concert, 5-2, 6 p.m., Jose and Mike uh, Barago will, will man the booth, talk to individuals, give tours if they choose to, okay? That's also a, um, an option. Padre Sonidos on 5-5, band concert on 5-6 with Rick and Eric uh, Caranda, Cinco de Mayo Kermes, which is basically Admin and Leo. Admin has been a real advocate, I'm sorry, Leo has been a real advocate for the Cinco de Mayo. This has been in the works for at least two or three years now. Uh, pandemic put it to a halt. So we'll, we'll launch that this, this uh, Cinco de Mayo weekend, 5-7, May 7th. Uh, the following eight music department awards, 510, Rick is going to man the booth as well as provide uh, tours. So you get the flow. We're doing this every week, uh, two or three events, four uh, uh, events per week. Next slide. Uh, then we go for the final run there, the, the middle of May. We'll have a mailing number three. If we need mailing number four, we will. Um, EOS has been a great partner uh, for us, uh, leading the way, coaching us, being the cheerleader on the side, 
and exactly what we need to do to inform uh, our residents. Um, week seven, uh, during graduation, both at Wooddale and Bensonville, I will speak in regards to the referendum. Uh, just once again, future Fenton students need to know, their parents need to know what we would like uh, their students to experience well here at Fenton. Next slide. Then it goes all the way to the election day. Um, once again, this is a living document. If we feel like we have to put more on one area of the community, we will, whether it's a religious side or the school side or maybe the taxing body side or just our parents, right? So um, it's, it's a living document and it, it, and it will evolve. Any questions on, on that section? Board are welcome to come to as well. So <laughs> um, I think, uh, um, I know Kate has volunteered a couple times uh, to be present. Okay, moving on. What else are we doing with the, with the informational referendum? Well, we're gonna launch a new video today. Is there the premiere showing, uh, directed by Dr. Batson. Dr. Batson, do you wanna say something? Good evening. Uh, many of you probably remember the video that we did as we launched this uh, uh, process early on, uh, sort of a community engagement video. Uh, we took a page out of that book and created this one uh, that you'll see here shortly. And it basically uh, describes the situation, describes the challenges we have, and talks about the referendum, what, what impact it is. So it's, it's very similar to the presentations that James has been giving around the community, but just in case somebody doesn't get to go to one of those presentations, uh, this takes a page out of that. So we'll watch that now. At Fenton Community High School District 100, all of our students become successful, passionate, empowered learners. Each and every student has the opportunity to succeed in anything they choose. Welcome to Fenton High School. I'm Superintendent James Ontanko. Our Fenton High School District community works together to ensure all our students become successful, passionate, and empowered learners. We are proud of our school. Our staff is committed to equitable practices that meet every student at their individual level and provide the necessary support for meaningful learning. Our staff is passionate about helping students achieve their potential. Benton teachers and coaches build relationships with our students and help them succeed. Our team works tirelessly to create a safe and secure environment for our staff and students. But there's one significant obstacle we can't overcome, the lack of space in our aging school building. We may do with what we have in our 1950s building, but our second rate facilities are keeping our students from reaching their full potential. Our infrastructure has been extended well beyond its useful life. Mechanical systems, plumbing, and electrical systems need to be addressed to keep the building safe and healthy. Airflow is inconsistent with some kids swaying in one room and others freezing in another. Our security system needs improvements. Flooding at building entries continues to be problematic. Our classrooms and learning areas are small and outdated. Fenton's athletic music facilities and auditorium are subpar and old and some of our sports teams can't even host home games or tournaments. This holds our students and teachers back in academic extracurricular programs. It creates significant safety concerns for everyone in our school. It packs our students into classrooms that were too small even before the pandemic made the need for more space and cleaner air even more urgent. Our kids deserve better. That's why our community came together in a comprehensive community engagement process over the past year. Working together and sharing ideas and passions, we created a roadmap for the future of Fenton. The community-driven $129.7 million plan to renovate 
modernize and expand Fenton High School will now appear on our ballots to approve as a referendum in the upcoming election on June 28, 2022. If the referendum is successful, we will be able to renovate our school to make it safer for students and teachers, improve our programming and career learning spaces, modernize our classrooms for the 21st century learning. With improved and safe facilities, our students will perform better. They'll have the newfound sense of pride that comes with attending the school of 21st century learning environments, just like other students in DuPage County. They'll reach their full potential through blended learning, STEM, extracurriculars, and sports. They'll have more opportunities to follow their passion, graduating healthier, more well-rounded, and ready for high-wage careers. Our community developed a roadmap for the future of Fenton High School, and it is now a referendum. To achieve the improvements desired by our community, the District 100 School Board voted unanimously to place a referendum on the ballot in the upcoming June 28 primary election. To meet these critical needs, this $129.7 million referendum will fund these projects with an approximate tax impact of $395 a year for the average homeowner. If these are the futures we want for our children, we must act now. Every year, the improvements needed at the R school becomes more expensive. And this runs contrary to our efforts to make our district more fiscally responsible. We have taken important steps to control spending and ensure as much money as possible goes into the classroom and our students. Fenton has the lowest bond and interest fund tax rate among high school districts in DuPage County and an overall tax rate that is significantly lower than the state average. For additional information, please visit our referendum page on our Fenton District website at www.fenton100.org. There you can learn more about our roadmap and find a list of events where you can visit the campus to see firsthand what this roadmap means for the future of Fenton. Our kids deserve the same opportunities provided by other districts in DuPage County. This plan we developed together will provide a safer, 21st century learning spaces for all of our students. That was a great question with what John was asking. Is it 395 from the gig? No, it isn't. Um, Bruce, you want to talk about how it will be divided yeah, depending on expense? The funds are needed and the bonds are issued. So, to avoid confusion with that calculator, we kept it flat and steady. But more than likely, it will be less initially, at least for the first year or two, and then gradually increase. I almost think that that should be in there, in there instead. Just saying this is something that we will start. As we spend what as we, yeah, as charge we as we spend, yeah. it, you know, because well, oh, three hundred ninety-five, you know, damn, right off yeah. the bat. That's a good question. That might be a, like a little. Maybe what I could do since the video is complete is after the presentation, well, well, I could go into my speech. We usually show this, then I. <laughs> then I really talk about it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, Google. So I could, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, and it's, it's exactly what's it. Like, if we only spend $40 million that first year, it's not going to be 395 It might be 30 bucks, right? So, things yeah. like that. That's a real good point. It's going to be laddered. Well, yeah, and, and I think you need to know that. Yeah. I mean, if I saw that, I, mean, I would be thinking, like, right away, I'm going to use charging extra 395 Right. That's a good point. All right, so what we have now here, I'm gonna invite Rick Cambick. Uh, once again, a lot of energy, a lot of torque, and a lot of force here moving this forward. And once again, board, is communication, communication, and, and more communication. So what we're gonna ask um, 
Rick here, he as you know, he's our website guy and he's gonna just show you real quick what's on our website so you are well informed. Or if, if, if a community member is asking, hey look, where can I find more information, you can refer him here. Uh, the local paper picked up from James's uh, weekly letter that we launched the webpage, so that went out to several, uh, about a thousand people. And then the informational brochure also has fenton.org slash referent. So as we pass more of these out, people go directly to it. And uh, up top, we have our drop down menus, and facility referendum is its own role. So uh, stands out. So, Dr. <clears throat> Batson, if you can start scrolling down a little bit. So this is a lot of the uh, informational messaging that's in the video, as well as on our brochures. Uh, it's laid out in more of a, a story format. There's an intro there that encourages people to come into the building and see it for themselves and ask questions. And then we've got a, a table here of three referendum links that take you to subpages. As we continue to go on, there are going to be more. So we're in the process of building those. We're going to click on them in just a minute, but uh, go ahead and keep scrolling down. So we've got some more, more pictures, because there's a lot to tell our story. Uh, that one was from the uh, choir concert when we took a lot of water right beforehand. There's the, the soccer team that can't play on our campus. Uh, it's the same courageous group that came in and gave us some feedback. Um, and this dates, the, the next picture, scrolling down, uh, dates back to 2019 when we were actually talking to the staff about the needs and, and uh, the, the state of the building. This is all, oh, there's an extra picture that we haven't seen in a while. That's some of our science rooms. And in fact, we had to lug a lot of our stuff back and forth. It's a culinary classroom where the classroom is in the lab space as well. And then despite all that, our kids are succeeding. But how much higher can they go if, if we give them the better tools? So more pictures to tell the story. Um, and a lot of this has to be repetition. So if we scroll all the way back up to those quick links, so we're going to start with uh, question and answer. If you go ahead and click on that one. Each one of the subpages, we're going to start with, with a great picture. And if you also notice, under the picture, each page has click here to read in Spanish. And there's also click here to go back to the main page. And then at the bottom, there's a click here to go back to the main page. So our whole group, as I scroll down, uh, compiled a lot of different possible Q&As. Uh, my favorite one is the, the shirt that he's wearing that says, is your district the uh, AP district of the year? Didn't think so. <laughs> uh, hey, it's a question. It's a question and answer page. So that will also evolve as we get some new questions that we, uh, we feel like need to be answered. We'll, we'll put them on there. Uh, I think that disclaimer is everywhere that this is an evolving process. We're more than happy to update the web page as we go. Informational events. So again, this is a lot of what you guys just saw, mm -hmm. but made available to everybody. So there's James again, our official town halls to talk about the referendum. And then um, there's a transition paragraph that says, hey, we know you guys are busy, so if you're already going to be here for the NHS ceremony or already going to be here for the musical, yeah. kill two birds with one stone. Here's a list that uh, we know we're going to be at. Bring your questions. And then uh, the referendum tax information. So on that one, uh, in the, the intro, uh, it describes that the bonds will be taken out uh, at the time that the construction is about to occur and then it will be phased in over a period of time and the impact or the, the additional tax may not be seen right away. So here's our interactive tax calculator. Uh, it defaults to 229 because that was the designated average based on the, the research on what the average home is in Bensonville and Wooddale. It also defaults to the homeowner exemption, assuming that everybody uh, is living in the property that they own. And then you can just, uh, Go ahead and click in the numbers and change the numbers, or you can change your exemption and it just auto adjusts the math. And at the bottom, it gives you the, the new estimated annual tax impact. That's great. And then you can type in any uh, any value, any dollar amount, and it will it will adjust. Uh, so this took a lot of programming, but it, I think it turned out great. Uh, we've already gotten some some feedback on it where people are. Uh, able to better look at their own situation. And uh, my favorite part is we're able to code it so that it auto adjusts to cell phones. So everything on these three, four pages uh, auto resize and are functional to anybody who wants to get more information. So uh, again, it's evolving. We'll be adding more to it. 
uh, and the great video that we just saw, there will be a sub page for referendum media. So it takes time and uh, a lot of energy, and we are full steam ahead. Thanks, Rick. I uh, just want to give him a shout out to a lot of team members working here, uh, including Rob Grossi, um, as Bruce, with, with all accurate information in regards to prices, as well as our architects there with the question and answers, and EOS Sullivan helping us do together. As you can imagine, we're trying to create an airplane while we're flying at the same time, too, so it's quite challenging. Every day is a little bit different, but definitely doable. Okay, any questions there? Next slide, please. This next one is the school administration restructuring. Sam? Yeah, thank you, James. So we just wanted to highlight we talked briefly before. But we are in the process of restructuring our administrative team. And I want to emphasize that it's healthy for us to look inward. We are very pleased with the people that we do have as our administrators. So that, that's not what's driving the changes. We've been able to get feedback. We're adjusting some positions basically to improve on any inefficiencies that we have in the system. We've been deliberating, we spent a lot of time gathering, like I said, feedback, having different phases of, of what we were going to do. Um, we're going to go into more, more detail uh, in your closed session, but just wanted to kind of give a, a general overview. Um, we also had two resignations, uh, one today, one last month. So obviously, whatever that happens, it's an opportunity to shuffle people around, have new experiences with people. Um, so sometimes that, that plays a part too. I want to emphasize it's the same number of administrators that we have as, as we have currently. So you may see someone with a little bit of a different title or what have you, but uh, it's the same individuals. Uh, also, I want to highlight who we are. We do have a new position that we've already posted, Division Leader Multilingual Programs. Uh, we're already getting some, some quality applicants for that position. In essence, what it does, it replaces a vacated Division Leader position, although the departments that it's serving are different. But it certainly is a, an, an open position. So part of what we'll be seeing is same administrators, um, with perhaps a little bit of different duties, and, but there'll also be a new posting, as I said, based on, on those resignations. So the process will eventually be, uh, positions will be posted as far as after this board meeting and finalized for the board by the main board meeting. And we will have recommended candidates here in May, and then those will be solidified, obviously. Any questions here? Mind uh, keeping in mind that we're going to talk about this during closed sessions because we're going to mention names and contracts, contract lengths, and HR information. <clears throat> Anything overall? Next slide, please. This one's exciting: health insurance renewal with Bruce Martin. <laughs> yes. Uh, last month it's we Bruce. There's no our... picture on that slide. What happened? I, I, well, I'm, it's <laughs> more next month. So this is just a preview. <laughs> <laughs> What what yeah. possible picture do we have of health insurance? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're working on it. We'll, uh, we've got a couple of doctors the, the here. Graphics. We'll put them on there. Oh. Um, <laughs> anyhow, in any event, uh, we received our health insurance renewal information uh, last month. Um, so we're giving you that information tonight, and then we'll have more information next month as well. Because we do belong to an insurance pool. I know we have some new folks here that um, probably want to hear more about that. But in any event, um, our health insurance renewal, and this will take effect July 1st, 2022, so a couple of months away. But our PPO is going to go up 6.5%, and the HMOs are 9.7, excuse me, and dental is 3.7. Last year, the current year we're in now, uh, we actually had a modest decline in rates, so that was a great thing to experience. So, But uh, you know, people are coming, going back to the doctor now. The world has opened up, and think, procedures are happening, elective surgeries are happening. And uh, so uh, drugs are being taken, uh, you know, that type of thing. So those costs are, uh, medical costs are all going up. So um, open enrollment, we do have for our staff uh, every year. We conduct that in May, so May 2nd to the 20th, and more information will be coming out to them uh, to alert them of that uh, period of time. Um, this year it's kind of interesting. We're going to have a, a total uh, online 
enrollment, so self-serve enrollment. So staff will have the opportunity to, to make changes themselves. Uh, of course, the approval would go through you know, the business office, but uh, they'll have that opportunity, uh, availability, I should say, rather than a, a traditional paper form. So we're excited about that. We've been working on that uh, for a while now to build that database, so we're, we're really excited to launch that. So. Um, anyhow, more information I'll share next month, but just wanted to kind of give you a preview of uh, how things are shaping up for us for, for uh, the next fiscal year, school year. Real quick, what's the participation rate from us, from the district? What do we pay? What percentage do we pay? The, uh, the, for the teachers with the uh, PPO, it's, they contribute 20%, the board contributes 80%, and then the HMOs are a little bit higher. They're in the 90% uh, percentage that the board contributes. Any other question? Okay. Next slide. This one is Student Code of Conduct is an annual event, Sam. Yeah, thank you. So uh, we were just presenting this just to take a look at, just so we know that James said this is annual. This year we have about 15 staff members and two students from the Rising Committee put in that over the winter six times. Uh, we're only recommended, both well, sorry, we don't get only recommended change this year is regarding student appearance. And I wanted to highlight part of our equity initiative. We have student voice uh, committee that meets, and it's one of the, the early on in the school year, uh, it came out, students' views towards some of the aspects of the dress code. And so that was something we listened to as well as some of the other staff that it informed our committee when we moving forward. Next slide. Kind of hard to read, and certainly when you can read through this, um, I'm not going to necessarily read the whole thing, but you can see some of the parts of student affairs are crossed out. It emphasizes accepting fair must be worn at all times. We added a few different, um, few different words there under these various categories. Uh, what is appropriate, acceptable, it's not a you know, it's listed there, what we're not going to allow. And then, I mean, you know, it's like blocking me a little bit, but it says, sorry, what's that say? Staff. Staff, okay, I'm sorry about that. Staff being asked students to make adjustments to be in compliance. That's under letter B. Students may be sent to the student center. And then, uh, coaches and sponsors and the best ones followed. Pretty much that's it. Again, for, for most years where the committee meets, there are a variety of topics, but this is what the committee discussed this year that it felt like needed to be adjusted. Any questions? No wheelies. So who, who determines acceptable? Right. Um, well, what we kind of went away from was where it's sort of some sort of, but as you can see with crossed out, shoulder, yeah. mid, thigh, uh, that isn't necessarily, um, you know, different people, different looks. I mean, it, it just became one of those things where we didn't want to like try to measure out what's going on. Some of the things we heard is some people have longer arms than others. Some people are different than others, and perhaps this person could be highlighted while this person isn't. So there's some inconsistencies in it. But, but ultimately, uh, the options are listed there as far as whether a staff member believes it should be adjusted, or then it would um, basically it could become a situation where someone is brought down uh, to the office regarding. Did, did we have some, some incidents with wheelies? Is that why uh, no wheels and rollers? So it seems like kids getting to class faster. Maybe this um, traffic. You know what? I, I, I <laughs> didn't pick up on that, but no. Not that, I, not that I'm aware. I can't it's, imagine it's, maybe in the past there has been. Right, it's, it's more as a safety issue and destruction of our, our floor. Tom John, Cobles John's looking going, at me right yeah. there and says, hey, look, they don't scratch my floor. Fast lane. You know, so. No wheelies. Fast lane. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. You used to have one, kid? So, like, no, I just think they're cool. I think not, they're cool. Not, it's not addressed. Like, I, I wouldn't say it's not addressed. I would, uh, 
it wouldn't say that necessarily it's, it's an automatic type situation. Um, so. Uh, hats are crossed off, so they could have explicit stuff on no. their hats? Well, that's a great question. Um, hats can be worn, um, clothing was fixed, so the emphasis is on clothing, but no, we would not accept that hat either. So maybe that's something we should, we should look at. But the idea is you can't have a hat for loading drugs out. Right. But if you say clothing, you kind of being particular to denounce going between hats and clothing. I mean, it's it's kind of yeah, right. It's, right. It's, it's but all, it's all yeah. encompassing if you consider it clothing. Once you start to get too specific, then it gets to be long and repetitive. Right. Well, well, one of the hats is part of your outfit. Yeah. Yes. Right. <clears throat> Good question. Yeah. 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 So, well, so just understand that once, assuming it's approved next meeting, that whatever's crossed out there will be gone. It'll be folded. Yeah. So if someone's wearing a hat, so that's part, part of your out. outfit. So hats are allowed? Hats are allowed to be worn currently. Right. I wear beanies sometimes, so indoors. I, yeah. My head gets cold, so it makes sense. Right. I mean, this is the thing that fully kind of involves over time. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the incarnations. <laughs> as John says in my past slide, where <laughs> what was unacceptable, which it, it changed. I don't think you know, my, my, uh, the way I look at it, you know, the committee met numerous times as a first group, and I think they came up with, you know, the appropriate appearance uh, section here. Any other questions? No. Okay. Next. Next slide. I think a job fair and career fair. Sam, back uh, to you. I know, well, well, <laughs> um, so Thursday, April the 28th, we have our careers and job fair. Uh, we're, we're, we're pleased to bring it back, obviously, after times of COVID, where we haven't necessarily been able to do this. Right now, we have between 20 and, and 25 companies or so. Seem to get a few more in, but obviously it could be you know from unions to armed forces, public works, uh, parks and recreation, and, and various businesses that, that may be there. What we'd like to try to obviously there's things like giveaways, which is always fun, a pair of sunglasses or or candy. We're also going to have a raffle for students that participate, not just well, but actually participate, take an interest, uh, kind of. You know, even more interest uh, as far as from a student perspective. But it's a great opportunity for kids to see what's out there and talk to people in the field. So we're looking forward to that. So you do have the military there? Yes. Yes, we do. And that first picture there to your to our left here is uh, the park district, which Joe was talking about at the job fair. Yeah. Next slide. I think this one's yours too, Sam. Okay. <laughs> Bruce, you're a little jealous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you have pictures. <laughs> well, big night for me. Um, 2022, 2023 renewal. Actually, there's no fee this year. I'm pleased to announce. Yeah. Um, Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. But, um, <laughs> but we do need to still renew, obviously, there are one of them. I'm so sorry, you guys. Right. I don't know why that's doing that. Continue to participate in the IHSA. So that'll be a real easy one. I'm sure we're all in favor of that. All right. Next slide. Real quick, there's five FOIAs that we received this month. Um, I'll just go through them real quickly. All of them have been resolved. The Center of Square Reporters wanted to know if there were any TRS, excess salary, and sick payments. ABC wanted to know uh, a little bit about Challenge Library books, which are books that uh, they're trying to de-shelf. We haven't had any uh, requests for that. Canon Solution America, all contracts, agreements for copier, printers, etc. Smart Procurement, we do this every quarter uh, in regards to their requi um, requesting for all of our vendor requests. 
that we have um, partnered with this last quarter. And Smart Local 265, all con contract agreements for new construction, renovation, maintenance, and calendar year 2022. Um, Mary Timmons is our FOIA officer. She's doing an excellent job in regards to this. Thank you, Mary. Uh, once again, all five have been resolved. Thanks, Mary. You're welcome. Thank you, Mary. Uh, thank you for the informational items, and we go right to consent uh, agenda. Uh, do we have any questions or comments regarding the consent agenda? Um, I, I know I asked this earlier about the survey. So is there a way to, and I'm just I'm all about saving money, can they just expound on the survey that was done in 2014, or do they have to, like, do we have to go from the ground up? I think we could discuss that at the discussion action item. Patty, this is the consent agenda, yep. Just a real quick comment on letter G right there, real quick. That is our music and choir. Um, they've been trying to go to Orlando, uh, Florida for the last two years now. COVID stopped that. So we're very excited to send our students, our music and choir kids to go there this year. Thank you. That's probably some surplus of funds from... <laughs> Board, questions? We're good? All right, so I may have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. I'll make the motion. Thank you, John. I second. <coughs> Sylvia? <coughs> may I have a, a roll call, please? Yes. Rigo? Yes. Figueroa? Yes. Hade? Yes. Jalowick? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Redzinski? Yes. Ting Paul Pong? Yes. And motion passed. Uh, next is our discussion items. We'll start with the uh, tentative amendment. Let's see, tentative amended budget 2021 and 2022 for Bruce. Okay, thank you, Kit. Uh, CM, I don't know if you wanted to do this part or not. Um, yeah, I know you've been on the <laughs> no, no, All right, never, never mind. I didn't know if you wanted to wing it or. <laughs> all right, sorry. No um, last last month we told you we would bring a tentative amended budget to your. Uh, board meeting tonight so that here you have it um, if you can go to the next slide Jim this uh, from time to time you know the board does uh, will need to uh, amend a budget um, we did bring that forward as we as, we, as I said um, this kind of language is right out of the mechanics of the school budget so I just thought I'd share that with you because we don't do it very often but um, we follow kind of the same procedure as adopting a, 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 you know the original budget so uh, posting the notice uh, of the budget hearing and availability uh, 30 days prior to the budget hearing, adopting uh, an amended budget at a public hearing held after the budget uh, hearing, um, and then posting it uh, on the district website, and then filing it uh, ultimately with the State Board of Education. So we'll, we'll follow all that, but just to, so you have the formality of, of the process. Um, legal requirements, preparing and tentative forum, available for public uh the public 30 days prior to adoption. Our uh, date would be, uh, we would do the public hearing and the, and, uh, the adoption uh, recommendation at the, at the same board meeting on June 15th. Um, and then of course it has to be adopted by the end of the month and the fiscal year, and then we'll submit to ISBE. So that's kind of our sp uh, specific protocol we would follow here in, at Fenton. Um, just kind of a high level overview there weren't any dramatic changes, but there were some pockets of areas that we wanted to kind of share with you and, and change and update. And that kind of leads to some other changes along the way as well that may more, be more modest, but still, uh, you know, to give an accurate depiction cool. of how we're tracking, we, we did make some other changes um, to, to go along with this. But overall, when you look at the, the entire budget, revenues are up 4.5% of $1.6 million. And I'll get more specific as we move on what's driving that. Uh, expenditures are up, up about 2.1% or 731,000. And then our estimated ending variance is 1.5 million. So that is a, a slight improvement from the original budget of $670,000 roughly. The sources uh, and, the, and the changes um, of revenues, the local, state, and federal, local is up 4.6%, state 2.5%, and the federal 5.3%. So the drivers here, uh, as you can see, this corporate personal property replacement taxes, that's the biggest one. Um, that uh, We knew that was tracking higher. We knew we wanted to, uh, obviously, uh, amend that in this uh, amended budget. 
Um, it's about $1.3 million more than the original budget. So we budgeted about $1.8 million. And those estimates are from the Illinois Department of Revenue that releases the funds, distributes the funds. So we took their estimate um, and they're far more than, than what that estimate is. It, it's uh, about $3.1 million uh, what we're projecting to receive. And we've received the bulk of that already. We'll, we'll get one more payment in, in uh, May. So that's a 76% jump. So that's a, it's a uh, dramatic and, and significant. So we wanted to share that information with you. Um, the other food service is the other piece that's, that's high uh, tracking. And these are uh, good stories, but just uh, you know, deserve an explanation. So the food service revenue, that's our uh, really our federal reimbursement for our lunch program. Um, participation has been strong, and uh, so that's great. When participation's stronger, higher, we get more reimbursement, and the meal rate is higher under the program we're currently operating under. We'll go back to the traditional NSLP, National School Lunch Program, next year, but we're under that kind of universal free program now, uh, and that's how we're operating. So uh, good news there, but overall, uh, that 4.5% shows there. ESSER, um, the grant amendments, 5.7%. Uh, Michelle so graciously, uh, diligently uh, amended her title uh, grants. Um, and really what's, what causes those uh, amendments to the grant are we, we, when we get our final allocation, uh, that's when we amend it. So to you know, take on some more initiatives or, or things that, that, that may have not been able to be budgeted initially are now because we have more funds available. Um, the ESSER funds we know 10.8% and then adjusted interest earnings um, actually, the ESSER is a, a, a decline of 10.8%, and that's more of a timing issue is what's driving that. And then the biggest drop there, although it's not a significant amount of money, it looks like a, a you know, dramatic increase of 85% drop, but interest earnings are, are kind of plummeted um, and, and uh, are not doing so well. Uh, we hope that'll, that is already changing for next year, so uh, we should see an increase uh, from what we're experiencing now. And then the next slide, this just got, kind of gives you an overview of the revenues um, by source again. Uh, so the amended budget and then the original budget's down at the bottom there. And you can see the local, state, and federal sources and all the way over. Uh, the dollar change, um, if you look at the middle column there of 1.5 million of the total column, um, and that's that four and a half percent uh, change from the original budget. And then when we look at the expense side, um, what changed there? Well, these things listed there, um, salaries less than 1%, so not a lot there. We did make some tweaks to the sub substitute salary account um, that we had to increase uh, modestly. Benefits 1.3%. Uh, purchase services 10.6%. Um, really what's driving that is the payments to our food service management company. So we're serving more lunches, we're serving more meals, we're being charged for more you know, meals uh, that they're serving, so that's kind of driving that. But it's you know the the revenue is offsetting that additional cost. Um, supplies a modest change there. Uh, equipment capital outlay twenty five percent bump. Um, that includes um, in, uh, a, a proposed uh, purchase of our buses, two buses that are coming up leased at the end of this year. We did include that in there. This is not final, folks. So I just want you to know that what if we uh, our intentions are to bring a recommendation to you. This is not approving that purchase today, but we'll bring that to you before the end of the school year. So, um, but that is, is in as a placeholder right now in the budget. And then the other item, tuition was pretty much flat. It was a, a modest decline there. And then uh, the other big item is the uh, non-cap uh, of 7.6%. What we did was collapse some other budgets and consolidate them that were in the supplies account and um, zeroed out some of those accounts that we weren't using or didn't need as much. And we put some of that money or most of that money uh, in the non-cap equipment. Uh, and then we added another 25,000 into that uh, account as well uh, for the purposes of purchasing, purchasing fitness equipment for our uh, fitness center here. Um, it, the plan is to phase that in over a two year period. So it would be this year and next year. Um, all of our cardio equipment is Old, uh, not working very well. We've had it repaired probably beyond uh, its useful life. Um, so we're kind of on uh, life support right now with that equipment. So uh, I've been working very closely with our uh, P 
PE uh, department chair, Dr. Caranda, and our athletic director to work through that. So um, we, we've got a plan, and we will bring that to you at, uh, in the coming uh, months' meetings to, uh, for a final formal approval for your consideration. How, how are we containing the supplies? Isn't cost of supplies overall? They're going up for sure. Yeah. Um, some of the items they're already under uh, under a bid, so we're we're okay, okay there. So that helps certainly. But uh, we do expect costs to go up. They will go up. They're already experiencing that now. Fuel cost is a great example, mm -hmm. but paper goods, things like that, um, you're seeing it in the store. We're seeing it here, you know, <laughs> at a wholesale level. Um, what else do I have here? Mm -hmm. Next slide. Uh, this is just a kind of a. Uh, expenditure at a glance by category. So we're just kind of comparing the two budgets, the original versus the amended um, by object or category, you know, salaries, benefits, and down the line. Um, there's that 2.1% uh, change um, to the uh, expenditures across the budget. Uh, and then this is just the, the next slide is just a uh, summary of operating fund revenues and expenses. Um, we have the educational fund all the way down to the working cash fund, uh, the beginning balance revenues, expenditures, variance, and then the estimated ending fund balance. So the operating funds is on the, uh, the front page there of close to $1.6 million. If you look at the second from the uh, right column, the variance all the way down that 1593, that's the projected uh, balance surplus at the end of this year. Uh, and then the next slide is the non-operating funds. So that's your debt service and capital projects and things like that. Um, so when you look at the total all, all in funds, we're at that 1,501,454 number uh, is the projection. So as I said earlier, that's, that's up uh, quite a bit from about $680,000 uh, initially projected. And really the big driver there is, is attributed to the uh, CPPRT payments. So thanks to the Illinois uh, state for that. Um, the next steps would be to approve the tenant budget uh, and place on public display. Um, we'll continue to refine it as we move forward and then we will present the final tentative amended budget at the June 15th uh, board meeting for formal approval. So that's uh, my quick uh, review of, of the amended budget and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Regarding the CPPRT, I'm not quite familiar with. It. Is that is that just how how much is that just an every year thing or how does it that is? Work? Okay. It's it's really uh, it's replacement taxes. So when back in the '70s oh, yeah. when there was a, a personal tax placed on individuals and corporations, mm -hmm. which was a kind of a you know a, a syntax almost a controversial tax, they ab abolished that back then in '78 and '79 mm -hmm. in the, uh, for those respective categories. Um, but they needed to replace that. So it's, it's, a, it's a, uh, collected from businesses in the state of Illinois that the state collects and then distributes that to governmental entities and including school districts. So mm -hmm. it is a, uh, we're in that million plus category every year. This mm -hmm. year is kind of a, a true exception. Um, okay. I don't know if we've ever received you know, $3 million. Yeah. We'll take it gladly, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind Everything of an anomaly. Counts. Uh, it's a typo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not. It's not. I, I, I'm pleased to say it's not. But it's. It's. Uh, we had quite a discussion with my peer group. To uh, everybody's kind of. Is anybody getting as much money as I am? And it's. It's amazing uh, and shocking at the same time. So, uh, right. but yeah, that's kind of what's happening. We can amend the budget every year. We haven't since I've been here. Um, you can well, amend we, it. We've, we've moved uh yeah i mean, we've certainly you know amended grants and things like that and or reported you know big changes and things like that yes through resolution and things like that we should yes absolutely and as you did last month we uh, we did a transfer then it's always now, good to amend a budget when it's positive and not the negative uh, yeah, yes. yeah. This, this is, <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice statement. It's very positive. For pretty, board. pretty simple when you're amending into positive. Yeah. Now, yes. as far as the ESSER grants, uh, is that going away? Is it when is it expired? Uh, when is it sunset? Well, it depends on which grant. So the, oh, the biggest right. grant we receive is is good for two more years. Okay. 
Yeah. And then we have one that's will end next year and then another one that's going to end the end of this year. So there's three buckets. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. If no further I know questions. This is probably not really budget related, but kind of is. At times during, before I became on the board, I've heard lab teachers say lack of supplies, or lack of lab equipment, we weren't able to do this or that. How much is that related to space or is it just, is it really resources? To I'll store talk, those items? Yeah, I'll, I'll speak up and Sam can speak in Michelle. If it's resources or cons uh, consumable goods mm -hmm. or pipettes or something like, we have the resources to purchase okay. those. Um, to do experiments w which might need more space, uh, better technology, um, that's a space issue. Um, our staff, I believe, and we back it up, if they need a resource, we usually get it for them, whether it's laptop, whether it's Chromebooks, um, whether it's, um, I mean, I can't, we always find the resources uh, for, for those classes and supplies. It's, it's, it's probably a space issue. Sam, anything, or Michelle, yeah, do you wanna? I would just say, especially like the last couple of years, funds that are going away we did find some place to spend right before we had to we're doing our best it can be very challenging because yeah. you, you have to you know I know spend it on the categories that they you know you, you need to that required mm -hmm. so but it, it uh, we're we're doing our best and I think we're on track yes okay. all right thank you uh, we have a motion of the Board of Education approved the 2021 2022 tentative amendment budget as presented and place it on public display in the district office. It is further recommended that the board schedule a public hearing at 7 p.m. during the regular scheduled meeting on Wednesday, June 15th, uh, 2022, prior to the adoption of the final amended budget. Uh, so may have a motion? So Second. Second. Patty and uh, Leo. And uh, may have a roll call, please? Yes. Rago? Yes. Hayde? Yes. Jalowick? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Radzinski? Yes. Figueroa? Yes. Tingpao Pong? Yes. And motion passed. <coughs> uh, Bruce, the site survey proposal? Yes, indeed. So um, this is really a, a kind of a topography study, and, and to, um, we'll get to Patty's question in just a minute. but. Um, we did work with our architects very closely. We did do an RFP for these services um, to solicit proposals for, from surveying companies um, to uh, conduct a, a survey on our uh, properties to study really the stormwater management, um, flooding issues in the in the on the property. Um, this really would be an updated version from the 2014 survey. So at that time. Um, there was a, it was a limited uh, work in scope. It was more focused on the specific areas that they were working on, not the entire property. And I think this, uh, the, the intentions of this uh, proposal would be to build on that 2014 uh, study uh, as we move forward. So we know that you know, when we did the, in, back in you know, 2014, 15, we did the construction here. Uh, we used a different architectural firm, um, but I think it, it is not, it, it's still useful um, but but it's not as comprehensive as, as what we need it to be um, and what the architects are recommending. So um, the, the proposals were there. The, you can see there's quite a bit of price difference. We are uh, recommending with, with STR's uh, blessing to, to go with the least expensive proposal from a firm that they've worked with quite a bit and, and uh, support. Um, so we would likely pay for this all next year. There might be a partial payment for work completed this year which we can handle uh, budget-wise, but um, the majority of the, the, the billing would, would occur um, in the next fiscal year, and we'll budget accordingly for that. How can there be such an extreme difference in these three bidders? You have two that are very close, 
and one that is almost half, are we getting what we're paying for? Are we gonna get what we need by spending only half the money? Uh, sometimes things look too good to be true, and are we gonna get what we need or are we gonna regret this? I know we can't predict it, but that's such a huge difference, it does give me pause. It is. Um, sometimes that does happen on occasion. Uh, we are entrusting the you know, professional opinion of our uh, architect who has worked with this firm uh, in the past. Um, Colby and Alan, I know you're both here. I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, so, uh, so not only has this firm actually worked on this site, uh, they are uh, they work very closely with our civil engineers. back and forth and so so we're confident that they'll do a good job yeah they're a, a regular resource that, i'm not complaining it's yeah. just it seems yeah, very I, yeah, extreme no, I, I to be almost half that's of like the, the other two rule of rule of uh you know uh, bidding right if you get a low low one you probably throw it out yeah. yeah but uh, yeah the european method <laughs> throw out the top throw out the bottom, the bottom pick from the middle you're probably better off which we can't do by statute right, I get it. right. <laughs> <laughs> why would we do something but, sensible but but by the way this is a professional service so it's okay. not bound by public bidding laws okay so we could uh, do uh, put it to every one of them any one of them but uh but they uh but we have confidence that these guys will do a good job and so why take them you said they worked on this site before? Yeah, they did some surveying back. We had done some studies to address the flooding back by the auditorium. And they did some topographic surveys around there that helped us you know, figure out how the land was applied. Maybe that's the savings are already familiar with the site and have half the work done? Yeah, a little bit, probably. <laughs> that now makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Would, would this be uh, useful with current 3D? Uh, yeah, well, that's part, that's part of why we need this is because the survey is actually, you know, the paper thing that we see isn't the important part. It's the it's the electronic CAD file with the points that are in three dimensional that the that the civil engineering firm can use to do cut and fill and topographic kind of analysis and things. So it's really the, that model that's more important than the, more detail. Piece, of, than the piece of paper that we'll get and call the survey. Yeah, I was, I was looking through it. I was missing that info when I was <laughs> reading through the material that was provided in our packet. Mm -hmm. uh, so may I have a motion that the Board of Education approves the pr proposal for surveying work uh, from R.E. Allen Associates L uh, Limited for a fee of 30, 33500 so moved. Thank you, Carrie. Second. I'll second. Uh, we'll take Leo for second. Yeah. May I have a roll call? <laughs> Rago? Yes. Galwood? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Redzinski? Yes. Figueroa? Yes. Hayd? Yes. Ting Paul Pong? Yes, and uh, motion passed. Uh, no, no, it would be paid out of local farms, yeah. Uh, third time, fourth I, time I, tonight? I'm, yeah, fourth I time. might as well go, right? And again, no graphics? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to live that one down. Contract. Uh, Thank you, Bruce. I'll make up for it next time, I hope. Um, How about a picture of that, at least? Yeah, well, we saw him earlier in the... Video. Um, okay, so this is the community engagement consultant proposal. Um, at our August board meeting, uh, the, the board did approve a contract with EO Sullivan Consulting for community outreach. Um, that initial contract developed a plan that placed a ballot question on the upcoming June election, and that objective, as you all know, has been accomplished. Uh, this new uh, and additional attached proposal will provide consulting services that will help educate the public on the plan that will be placed on the ballot answer questions and motivate people to vote so their voices are heard. So they, uh, to accomplish this, EO Sullivan will work with the district to develop effective informational messaging. Um, they have provided samples of their information plan and timeline, that, which we included in your board packet. Um, 
I know Mr. Antango feels comfortable. We all feel comfortable with this firm. That we think they've done good work. Um, <coughs> the detailed proposal is attached for your review. Um, so at this time, uh, we are recommending to uh, accept this proposal as presented in the, in the amount of $20,000. And I will say, when I'm am I amended the budget, um, I did make some adjustments in other areas, reducing it so there really won't be any increase. This is kind of offset. There is an increase here, or a fee, but it'll be offset with some other adjustments I've made in the budget. So it won't uh, have a negative impact. What's, what's different? What more are they going to do than what we're already doing now? Do we already doing our mailings? Do we have an engagements? I mean, Right, right. What, what's what's going to happen between now and June 28th? Absolutely. All this, so it's go, basically phase four was completed when you guys voted for the re referendum to move forward. All the mailings, all the structure of the mailings, the website design, um, as you know, they've done 14 referendums in the past. They say that over and over again. We're following their playbook. Um, they're coaching us for the next step. Uh, which is mailing one, two, and three. That is not a Fenton thing. We're doing the work. We, we are. Um, uh, I mean, how else can I say it? We're following their recipe on how to make a cookie, right? Um, and that's the cost of this contract. Is hey, give us the recipe uh, to have a successful referendum. That's one aspect. Whether it's the mailing, whether it's the town hall meetings, whether it's when to do it, when to set up the mailing, the strategies behind it. As you know, too, uh, Ed Sullivan also mentioned another branch. We're in the informative branch, right, of the referendum. There's also the campaign branch that we can't touch. It's for the the voting aspect of it. That's also part of this as well. So, um, uh, I I do highly recommend that we continue with our partnership with. With Sullivan until the 28th. Then now, after the, the referendum, I think we know the, the we know how to make a cookie now, right? So we could do it on our own for November and and, and March. Uh, but uh, it's still very helpful for me as well as my team in regards to what would next week look like, what was the next month would look like, how even though we can't, we don't know what's going on in the other branch of this campaign. Um, we're we're leaving in very good hands. That's being taken care of. So that's part that's part part of the price. Anyone else want to add anything to that? And this was discussed originally, right. so we knew this was coming. It's, exactly. It was a package deal just in two sections to meet all the legal requirements. So this is a unexpected, but I, I get the question. But yeah, we probably do need to follow through and finish the process in order to hope for the best outcome. Right. It seems like, you know, I, I get the question and, you know, uh, my teammates always say, hey, look, we're doing all the work. Well, yeah, we're doing because we this is our building, right? We're, 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 we're the folks uh, in the trenches, but they're the ones that, that are the chess players and putting the right places in the right square pegs. I hope that makes sense, Patty. Okay. I just want to, like, if we're already doing these things, and then we're going to pay them so that we can do what we're doing, but there is another component that we're not. Right. We can't do. And, and, they're, and they're I think. They're doing the guiding, right? They're, they're doing it right. They're guiding. They're guiding, right. We didn't know what to do until they tell us to do it. See what I'm saying? Yeah, we'll do the work, but no one told us to make cookies, right? Or, or to put coconut in it or milk in it, right? Put it in an oven at 375 or something. Is that what yeah, Plus, Bruce has already budgeted it. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so, if by June 28th, we're going to have I think we know what to do, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think the, the point John was making, too, is we're, we're seeing it through until the first, the first the election. Mm -hmm. And then we'll, we'll, the umbilical cord will be cut off probably by then. That's so graphic. I like the cookie. The cookie, we'll do the cookie. Baking the cookie. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, may I have a motion that the Board of Education approves the proposal for consulting services from E.O. Sullivan in the amount of 20000 So moved. Second. Uh, Juliet and uh, Carrie. Uh, and may I have a roll call, please, Mary? Yes. Rago? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Redzinski? Yes. Figueroa? Yes. Hayde? 
Yes. Galloway? Yes. Ting Po Pong? Yes. And motion passed. Uh, next, we go to Jim for the student Chromebook purchase of uh, fiscal year 2022. Good evening. As we uh, discussed uh, last month at the board meeting, uh, we plan to bring your, uh, for your approval tonight, a resolution to uh, purchase our, our Chromebooks for our students. Uh, this happens every year. Uh, for the last several years, we've been doing it slightly earlier in this March, April timeframe. And that does a few things. It gives us the Chromebook sooner so that we can uh, actually prepare them and have them ready uh, with lead times the way they are for some of this equipment. It takes a, a while to get these things in. Uh, the other purpose is to have those available for our incoming freshman students who are taking summer school so that they have a device to use during summer school. In the past, we had handed out some old device and then had to go chase them down and swap them out before the beginning of the year and they were sort of suffering with these older units so there's a couple uh, benefits there uh, I also had mentioned that the price had gone up about 30 percent uh, which was a shock to many people um, in response we've normally uh, used a um, consortium or a contract purchase uh, that's already been bid uh, previously by an organization and they come back and they bring us the lowest price uh, just to make sure this year I went out and checked a couple other uh, vendors of the same product as well as some other products with similar specifications um, this price still came in at or below uh, any of those others so I felt confident that it's not just us that's uh, this is the, the market that, that we're living in um, in spite of the fact that it went up about 30%, the actual cost that is on your, the uh, resolution tonight is not 30% higher than what we actually paid last year. It's 174 or some thousand dollars. Uh, last year it was about 150 in the mid 150s. Uh, but um, in, in this case, we are ordering slightly fewer Chromebooks because the in, incoming enrollment, the incoming freshman class is slightly low than what we had last year. So we were able to offset some of that cost increase by ordering a, a, a few less Chromebooks for this coming year. So any questions on that? I'm happy to. Can we use ESSER funds? Can we use title funds? We use title in combination. Yes, with yeah. We use a combination of title. And actually, we used a little more title funds. Thank you, Michelle. Um, a, a few more title funds to offset that difference <clears throat> this year. And that... That was helpful because during the last year we didn't do quite as much uh, professional development that we would use title money for because we didn't travel we didn't go out of state we didn't do those things that we don't, would normally do we did we still did professional development but not the higher cost ones so we were able to move some of that money into that and, and offset some of that and to be honest with you i'm just putting off some purchases that we had planned uh to offset a little of it uh and we'll work on that uh, later in the, in the summer uh but we need to get these these devices for our, our kids. I, I will tell you some districts are going cheap and getting lesser quality uh, machines in order to not you know go over what they spent last year. These are really good machines, they're durable. This also includes, it's not just the purchase price of the, the device, it includes a four-year warranty and it includes accidental damage, which means they could drop it, run it over with a car, whatever, it's repaired. Uh, prior to us doing that, we were running seventy-five to one hundred thousand dollars in repair costs a year uh, for keeping our Chromebooks in, in service. So it's well worth the the bit of additional cost for that, more than offsets that uh, that price that we used to pay, and we used to spend a lot of time repairing Chromebooks, which we don't have to do now because these are more durable. So there's a lot of a lot of good news there. So. Are we guaranteed the inventory if, if we were? Uh, they're, they're talking four to six weeks right now on this particular model. Um, this is a very similar model to we had, what we had last year. The irony is many of these companies, when they bring out their models, like some of the models are just now coming out, so you can't really get the newest model. So these are models from the late last calendar year, I'll, I'll say, um, because the new ones aren't available yet. Uh, so um, it's an odd position to be in, but basically these are readily available. If we wanted the latest and greatest, 
we'd have to wait till the fall, and we certainly mm -hmm. can't do that. We can't, you know, um, put our kids in that position. So, um, yeah, there is some some lead time issues, but we used to get them in, in about two weeks, and now it's more like four to six, maybe seven weeks. Uh, they also just a, a, a they also prepare them, so they assign. Um, you know, our Wi-Fi codes and all that kind of stuff mm. ahead of time. They unbox them and they prep them for us so that we stick a tag on and assign it to students. So it saves That's us a lot of, the of time. That's part of the price? Yeah. All yeah. part of the price yeah. of imaging it and getting it ready? Yeah, yeah. So we get, yeah, we get some of the service as part of our contract with them. Well, <laughs> how much for job security? <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty here. Okay. Uh, anything else? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so then we'll uh, have a, may have a motion to, for the Board of Education approve the uh, fiscal year 2022 purchase of a total of 355 mm -hmm. Dell model 3100 Chromebook computers from CDWG for the amount of 175,370. Zero cents. It's Patty. Second. And Sylvia, second. May I have, uh, may I have a roll call? Rago? Yes. Radzinski? Yes. Figueroa? Yes. Hayde? Yes. Jalloway? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Ting Popong? Yes. Yes. Motion passed. Uh, next, we go to James for our salary adjustments for the year 2022 and 2023. Thank you. Uh, the board is well aware of this, that we do a salary adjustment to our nine union staff, which includes administrators at will, as well as our bus driver. We feel that these salary increases are fair um, and just. And let me just go through them real quick. The adjustments are as follow. Administrative salaries for an overall increase of 3%. This will not include administrators who are in their reti retirement track. Add will salaries for an overall amount of 3% and bus driver salaries for an overall amount of 2.5%. And uh, we, we spoke of this prior, so we good on that? Okay, uh, let's uh, have a motion. May have a motion that the Board of Education authorize the superintendent to make adjustments to staff salaries to become effective for the 2022-2023 fiscal year. Um, adjustments are as follows. Administrative salaries for an overall increase of 3%. This will not include administrators who are in their retirement track. At will salaries for an overall amount of 3%. Bus driver salaries for an overall amount of 2.5%. Make it a motion. So moved. Second. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, John. And can I have a roll call? Brago? Yes. Figueroa? Yes. Hayde? Yes. Jalowick? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Radzinski? Yes. Ting Popong? Yes. Motion passed. Next is our uh, resolution for appointment to the DAOS uh, ES Board of Directors. James? <laughs> All right, this is a real quick one. DAO stands for AKA TCD. As you guys know that the TCD um, of COD, well, you gotta love all those acronyms, E-I-E-I-O, uh, is, composed, <laughs> is composed of 14 high school district uh, to give access to their students to participate in CTE programs, programs that includes autos, cosmetology, <laughs> criminal justice, EMT, nursing, fire, and so forth. I know this is very important to our board as well as our community. Uh, so the motion is to appoint me once again as the representative to be part of their board to lead that charge. Do you have time? I do. I do. <laughs> I'll make time. Okay. <laughs> well, then we're good. Uh, May I get a motion to, uh, for the Board of Education to approve the resolution to appoint Superintendent James Ontanko as Fenton's representative for the DuPage Area Occupational Education System as presented? So moved. Second. Okay, thank you, Patty. Thank you, Juliet. And uh, may I have a roll call? Rago? Yes. Hayde? Yes. Jalowick? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Radzinski? 
Yes. Figueroa? Yes. Ting Po Pong? Yes, the motion passed. Um, discussion only items uh, would be the construction manager updates. Sure. Please, James. Thank you. Uh, real quick, the district interviewed four construction management firms in April. Okay, Team Fenton included Kerry, John, Bruce, Jose, and myself. We also invited our architects for reference and input. Um, the four construction manager firms were Gilbane, Peppers, Nichols, and ICI. Interviews uh, per company were approximately an hour long. Questions revolve around pre-construction. So what are they gonna do for us before the construction or uh, during construction, especially when there's uh, staff and students in the building. After construction, when they we, we think it's all over and something breaks down six months later, um, st uh, staffing we discuss safety and we also ask specific questions related to Fen Fenton, including flooding, lack of space, or wetland in in the south uh, west corner, etc. Pretty much that discussion involved all my teammates here. Anyone want to add anything, Carrie and, and John? I know you guys were real an integral part of uh, that discussion. Lead off, sir. <clears throat> I would say they, three of them were really close. Uh, but they all seem to be capable of performing the task um, for us. One just simply, it was really close. And it became per personally, what do you prefer? What are you looking for specifically as far as issues and things that come up? How would they? equipped to address them, but also how stable is the potential staff and secondary staff. And that's where mm -hmm. they started to separate themselves at. And it became a little, little clearer decision once you consider all of those things. It was an interesting day. It was uh, an educational day. Uh, I was glad I was able to uh, make myself available for that. and. Uh, Good questions, good dialogue, good information. Uh, and in the end, uh, we were able to make the decision, a majority of us uh, were leaning one way and then uh, the people that weren't, that the people we had as our primary were their secondary. So in the end, it worked out well. Uh, I think we'll get a, a, a very good company representing us in uh, the remodel. Uh, when the referendum passes, not if, let's be positive, when the referendum passes. Yeah. And uh, we'll be in a good position to move forward. And I think some of what was brought up in public comments, um, I feel we need to still be cautious of that, but I think with this company, I feel a little more comfortable in that area as well, as far as overruns and owner rep and, and our input into the thing, our, uh, into the project, as far as our staff and the board. So I, I think we're going to be in a good position with this company if we move forward with awarding them the. And, and, and the administrations agree with, with John's assessment as well as Kerry. The company we're, uh, would, we would like to pursue a contract with is called Gilbane. Uh, the, the biggest um, school contract uh, construction manager firm, um, I believe, in Illinois. Uh, we've done our homework. I've called other superintendents to see some background information who have partnered with them, including Stevenson, um, uh, top tier school in the north side. Uh, we've also looked at com comparable uh, prices, okay? So they're pretty much com uh, com comparable. And um, um, what we would like to do next board is, once again, this discussion is to, for Bruce and myself, to reach out to Gilbane, the company, and to try to negotiate a fair contract for Fenton that we could all live with, and we might bring in the architects to assist with that as well. Um, anything you want to add, um, Jose, that were present, as well as uh, Bruce? Yeah, I, I think it was a great day, great productive day. Um, I think SDR did their job bringing, you know, for helping us bring four firms uh, to the forefront, and it was a nice problem to have, uh, struggling to, you know, three very highly qualified, they were all qualified, but the three that were very close uh, in uh, the, you know their presentations and likes that we all saw strengths in all of them. I think any of them would have done a great job. Uh, you know, we came to the agreement, and it was a, a great group, really, a collaborative group to work with. And um, I think ultimately, 
uh, you know, we felt very comfortable with this company bringing them forth. So, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was a good process and, uh, a tough one, but a, a nice problem to have. So once again, next step may, uh, we're going to try to pursue a contract with them. If, if it's a fair contract, we'll present it to the board and we'll ask the board to approve it. Jose, was there anything? I'm sorry. No, anything it's fine. Um, I just thank SCR. They, they did a great job putting a great, you know, group of people together, you know, made it difficult for us. I agree with Carrie and John. I mean, I think it was interesting to see the dynamics in terms of every group brought a different presentation and some of the, um, you know, the, the cream rose to the top, obviously, in, in, in the process, but um, really good uh, process to be a part of and interesting parts process to be a part of. It was interesting to see their plans. They, some of them had done their homework. They already knew what they wanted to do. You know, if, if this was tomorrow, if we started, they already knew what the plan was going to be. They already had a, a site map, you know, in terms of, like, where they would set up, um, what their plan was year by year, you know, in order to get this done. Um, so, and it was actually pretty similar a lot of them. So they all kind of had the same plan, plan of attack in terms of how they'd like to do the construction. Um, so it was a fascinating process. I was glad to be a part of it. And um, I, I think we're mm -hmm. going to be in a good spot going forward. Yeah. I wanted just to thank our facilities committee chairs too for devoting close to what, six to seven hours that day for it. And I know John asked uh, for, for time off. So mm -hmm. that was such a, a show of commitment. So I really appreciate you guys spending that time uh, on behalf of our board. Uh, in, in our community, so thank you for that. Just one insight too, it was important for Jose, myself, and Bruce to really see the day-to-day -day manager that's gonna be here at Fenton. We wanna make sure they're receptive to us, kind of like Alan and Colby. Hey, look, we want you to respond like in now, not next week. So we were engaging <laughs> that as well, and I think we've, we've chose a good company for that. We met the two individuals that's gonna be here in day-to-day -day, uh, process, whether it's safety, whether it's receptiveness, and, and, and accountability. Hey, look, you said you were going to do that. What happened? So um, it's, it, you, you really need to meet the individuals, and um, it was really a, a, a good process. So once again, uh, we'll try to get a fair contract. We'll work with the right individuals, even work, bring in legal to look at it as well, so it'll be ready for you to view. Now, Next. just a real yep. quick question. Of if the contracting, it doesn't. It, is there a chance that the contracts don't, there's no agreement with it, or does it get changed, and then how does that work? Contract in regards to per per work or mm -hmm. the contract so with with the with, yeah, with the group. I think um, there's going to be pricing in the in the contract, and I think once it's the pricing is set, upon, it's, yeah. it's agreed upon. They're held by it. Okay, Colby. Anything else I, I needed to add with uh, pursuing a contract with right with a construction company and what that enti entails? Uh, yeah. Uh, I think. Well, first of all. The Anyone can terminate them whenever they want to for compensation to that point. Uh, the contractors generally charge a, a, uh, a fee, which is their kind of profit in things, and then they charge what are called general conditions for the manpower that it takes to do that work. And that's on a time spent kind of basis, and they usually provide an estimate and rates that that would be billed against. And, you know, firms like this always, you know, come in under that kind of number. So okay. so I think you know, I, I think that's the real thing. So we wanna we wanna just look at, you know, their staffing, you know, make sure that's appropriate, not too much, not too little, you know, to get the job done. Uh, I think they presented some staff that that was you know, seemed excellent, right? Because a, a site supervisor who spoke Spanish, uh, you know, so just some really nice kind of qualities that they, that they have. This is a real good point. We they, There's also timelines, as you heard. Um, it looks about two and a half years to two years, uh, two summer worth, full summer uh, of work. So it's, you know, it's, it's nice to see there's light at the end of the tunnel once we start this. So more information to come. All right, thank you. And uh, next we'll go to the committee reports. Uh, we'll start with our Bensonville Community Foundation Committee. Um, did, did you have anything that you wanted to say from the meeting that you went to? Uh, the only thing that, I, that uh, stood out with me was uh, there was uh, uh, just positive feedback from the uh, women's conference that was held here. Uh, and it was something that they 
uh, Bentonville Community Foundation was happy to uh, fund, and they did mention that <clears throat> there were a lot of um, um, people that want to see it happen again, and uh, that one of the, stu the students that ran <clears throat> the, uh, the program, um, they're graduating, so they're going to be looking, they would like to see another student uh, from Fenton bring that uh, women's conference again. So it was, they said it was a, a decent turnout, but they believed that and they had a great speaker. So that was something that they would really like to, they'd be happy to, you know, uh, contribute to. So that was basically, that was what um, I got from that would be important to us. And then um, just the other day, we got an email um, stating that the um, Giving Due Page Days, which is an online fundraiser, uh, will be occurring May 2nd through the 6th. Um, we uh, will be, and speaking to James, putting that on our Fenton, um, am I correct, James, we'll put that website. on our Fenton website. website. There'll be a tab for that. And then um, I'll also forward that to our board members. And if you are um, inclined, you can put that on your own social media page. And then anyone that would like to, they can go on to this uh, Giving Due Page Days. And there's uh, a number of different non for profit organizations throughout DuPage that anyone could um, donate uh, funds to. It, it's, it goes from animal shelters to the Bensonville Community Foundation. I mean, there's, uh, I want to say hundreds of them there. So it's a good way to um, spread the wealth to these non-for-profit um, organizations. And it is a full week. So um, I'll be sure to forward them to all, all of us on the board. And then um, specifically, if you would like to uh, donate to Fenton, you can do that as well through the Bensonville Community Foundation. This is another great opportunity to, to give back to DuPage and particularly Fenton. It's a fundraiser, yes. a, a countywide one. We'll, we'll do that. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Oh, the 5K. We're doing the 5K as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't, I know Fenton is. Fenton is, yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, anything going on with the AP fund? A uh, that was not brought up. I, I don't no. believe it was brought up. Yeah. All right, thank you. So next is the uh, the DEI committee. And uh, so we had our first uh, DEI committee meeting today. And uh, Sylvia was kind enough to lead that. So uh, she spent that time. So I will give the report. <laughs> um, and I'll try to recall what we went through a little bit. Hopefully, you can fill in the gaps again. Um, so just. The, the first thing is, you know, DI, what, what, is, what is the difference between equity and equality? I think that's probably a good start to clarify. And I think um, the analogy that uh, Sylvia put out was, was really potent, which is, um, you know, a whole school that needed shoes. Uh, we can certainly buy shoes for all of, all of, the, uh, of the kids. Uh, but uh, so that's uh, equality where equity is... Um, buying the right size shoes for each child. So, uh, you know, it's needs-based, making sure that every child gets what they need. Uh, so I thought that was um, very clear and potent. Um, we went over the makeup of the, the demographic for our students. So is that going to be posted at all, or is that just something we went over? We can post it. Um, I, I'm just saying, if, if not, that's OK, too. Right. It's accessible to a report card. Um, but what, what we... In, in a nutshell, learn about uh, DEI is that we, we live and breathe it here at Fenton. Uh, it's part of our strategic plan. And, um, it, you know, we're trying to create a sense of belonging, um, a, a culture of uh, love and acceptance. And it, it goes through all parts of this building, starting with our infrastructure, uh, our curriculum, our finance, our operations, all parts of it. And uh, we have... Uh, built-in processes and committees in place to make sure that that vision uh, and mission is accomplished. 
in a nutshell. Yes. So, Sylvia, does that sound good? Uh, so next in is our uh, finance and facilities committee. And I don't know, have we gone through it enough or are we good? <laughs> <laughs> That's my well, the Vincentville Park District came out and pro provided a presentation regarding their Vincentville Park District uh, 2.0. 2. 2. And really gave an elaborate plan of for the future for the park district, as far as providing a campus-like uh, environment be from between the library, the uh, Blackhawk Middle School, and also the park district to extend space, courts at the park district, uh, put in a field over there and address similar to us water issues, of course, but also to provide two two soccer fields to to Finn High School. But beyond that, they wanted to enter into a, a IGA with, with, the, with the district and also other entities to, so we can uh, eliminate duplicate services. And collaborate and work better together and provide services to, to the communities, both communities, Wooddale and Basinville. Forward with the FGA and, and then you want to come into the soccer field. Is that with a coordinate that with SCR, right? Absolutely. And like let them do their plan. Absolutely. Does that take take on something that they would have done and do something or something else? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's a it's timely. It, it, it's timely and, and there's gonna be some coordination behind it for sure. Um, what I thought was really important to to hear from Joe was the fact that he mentioned um, you know setting aside personal agendas and moving the community forward uh, that was uh, really welcoming and then uh, the couple other things was the tax efficiency how how he wants and we should be all thinking about maximizing tax dollars uh, to benefit the community so, and just for clarification, we're talking two IGAs, one for the fields and one for more interoperability is the way I understood that. Or I guess we could roll it all into one, but it almost sounded like he was talking about two. Either way, we're going to cover all the bases. Right. That's absolutely right. We're going to cover all the bases and, 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 and work together and collaborate and, and be a team member. Exactly. And there's a... It's, Glad you brought that up, John. There's a step before that. He would like the, the board to approve a resolution so that we could start working on the IJ. That's the first step, and th that's what we're going to bring up. Is that what we're going to put on the agenda for yep, next I mean, month yep. so we could have that resolution to move forward? Correct. I'm comfortable with it. I think we should. We'd be foolish not to. I, and just a thought, too, you know, so that it, to, to me, I'm looking at, you know, how our community will will be curious and want to have, want to have questions answered mm -hmm. and, you know, possibly get it confused with the referendum as well. So just something to think about. Maybe mm -hmm. we need to have uh, some type of clarification between the difference between an IGA with uh, the park district and uh, the referendum. But uh, no, that, that's really well said. The, the IGA, which is a project with the two soccer players outside of the referendum, we'll, we'll find some messaging for that. We did lay out this plan to say it was not a, in, it was not attached to or <coughs> conditional. It mm -hmm. is a plan that the park district have, whether the funding source, regardless of, regardless of funding source. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the sale. Yes. Correct. This was important. Uh, let's go to LEND reports. LEND, well, there's a, uh, um, a meeting this Friday, but just real quickly, I've been forwarding information to you in regards to LEND, which stands for Legisl Legislative Educational North Dakota Page, which we're a part of. The one you probably stuck out in your, um, in your mind is the COVID leave day, which was approved by uh, the Governor uh, J.B. Pritzker. Um, so we'll more, learn more a little about other legislation um, in Springfield this Friday. 
And the next one is also mine, North DuPage. No, this is also yours, Leo. Uh, uh, NetSec, Net yep, for special ed. Yeah, yep. we got the operational board meeting. And like uh, every every year, we get uh, the personal report, the renewal of the health, health life insurance, the renewal of the various equipments, and uh, recognition of the employees. And more or less, it was like that. It was a short meeting. And I glossed over the ISB, IASB delegates. So um, we uh, we recently had a, a, an IASB uh, meeting uh, that included the, all of DuPage uh, educators. And uh, we were in Joliet, and we actually are- Downers Grove. Downers Grove, Downers. Downers Grove. We had Joliet as the speakers. But the Downers Grove uh, referendum, we were able to see how much of an impact uh, the, the renovations made with the facilities and I think just opening up the, the rooms for, for, for education and curriculum and the staff. And so, uh, I don't know, you guys want to comment on, on your experience with that? And it was very interesting to see how detailed and thoughtful the layout of the, the renovations were from opening up the classrooms and adding as much glass as possible. So there's a visual of staff working together or collaborating, same with what's going on in the different labs to some of the small details of dropping power out of the ceiling to having the ceiling open, having the ceiling open to adding in, uh, you know, the WAP, the WAP adapters for every classroom and office to uh, the Wi-Fi adapters in every classroom. Because with old buildings, that's, that can be a real challenge. It was very thoughtful and well done. Communal spaces were well thought out and uh, offering uh, alternatives to in-classroom, to open spaces, flexibility all around. It was, it was very well done. I like the, the garage door concept yes. that fit over oh, the yeah. spaces, you know, that would you know, you could cut off, make two spaces and you can you know, open it up and make the spaces bigger. I thought it was a really nice tour to have prior to what uh, we'll be going through. I, I also, the, uh, the dollar amount, initially, I, I'm going to be honest, I thought, wow, this is a lot of money that we're... 129 million, but then when you see the work that they've done and the cost that it was, it's like, okay, I get it. We have a lot more work to do here at Fenton than they have. So it, it made me understand better that I, I couldn't well, do their, three, build three buildings. Their budget was 160, <laughs> was it 164 million? I think that's what yeah, the that's budget about, was. Yeah, yeah, about 164 million. But that was between, so, two, two, buildings. Two, two buildings. That was between two buildings. But that didn't include all of the uh, pre-work they've done yeah. leading up right. to that. Yes. And where that's where we were missing yeah. over right. the years. They've had some work done in smaller stages that yeah. prepared them to use that 164 much differently than we have to with the 129 that we're looking for. I awesome. was pretty impressed with their culinary yes. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. department there. That was mm -hmm. very impressive. I don't know if you had a chance to see that. Kitchen aids at every station. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was very impressive. Huge screens, and, oh yeah. man. And the, and the tables with uh, computers that um, went down into the table and kind so of made a table, and when you're using the computer, that's right. that yeah. was mm -hmm. really. Yeah, that's exciting. A sense of pride for our students, our mm -hmm. staff, faculty, the community, uh, definitely. Um, well, thanks for sharing, guys. Um, next is the board policy committee. We did not have any changes, uh, so we're good on that. Uh, no, it just, was it the dress code or the code of conduct, did that fall into the policy? That's more of an administrative right. uh, so process. That's this, this, uh, this administrative, uh, that's basically the student handbook. Um, so uh, the next board meeting is Wednesday, yeah. May 18th, 2022 at uh, 7 p.m. Um, so uh, we're going to go and propose a closed session. May I have a motion and a second to go into closed session for the purpose of the appointment of employment compensation discipline performance or dismissal of 
uh, specific employees of the public body for legal counsel for the public body, including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an, an employee of the public body or against legal counsel for the public body to determine its validity. However, a meeting to consider an increase in compensation to a specific employee of a public body that is subject to the Local Government Wage Increase Transparency Act may not be closed and shall be open to the public and posted and held in accordance with the uh, this Act, uh, 5 Illinois CS 122 C1, and collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or their representatives or deliberations concerning salary schedules for one or more classes of employees according to Illinois uh, State Statute 5 Illinois CS 122 C2. Uh, again, may I have a motion? <laughs> Look at the tapes. So moved. <laughs> Look at the tapes. I said public body, I think, like five times. I'll make so, a motion. Okay. Second. All right, Juliet and John. Uh, roll call, please. Rago? Yes. Jalowick? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Renzisi? Sure, why not? <laughs> Figueroa? Yes. Hayden? Yes. Ting Po Pong? Uh, yes, and we're going to closed session. Do you guys want to take a five? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, I oh. the recipe for. We're back in open session. I'll wait for it. We back? back? Okay. Uh, so we just came out of closed session. Uh, may I have a motion and a second to adjourn? I make the motion we adjourn the meeting. Second. Okay. Patty and Leo. Uh, can I get a roll call, please? Rigo? Yes. Radzinski? Yes. Figueroa? Yes. Hey? Yes. Galloway? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Ting Po Pong? Yes. Motion passed. We are adjourned. Thank you guys. Thank you. Get home safe. Don't forget to sign, guys.